wait a minute, three grams of this stuff, which is like one and a half to two teaspoons every morning, can literally, based upon clinical evidence, result in a one and a half pound weight loss in just a couple weeks. That seems too good to be true. It almost has these Ozempic-like effects because it has a huge impact on GLP-1, but you need to be taking a decent amount of it. I'm talking about cinnamon. I mean, I gave it right away in the thumbnail. I don't like to dangle the carrot. I like to just tell you what it is. But we do need to know the proper like doses because I've done videos talking about cinnamon from an insulin resistance perspective as an insulin mimetic. But from a direct potential fat loss perspective, this is really interesting. And there's been some newer studies. There was like 2024 meta-analyses that looked at like 24 different studies. We're seeing interesting stuff with cinnamon. Let me know if you've experienced good benefits with cinnamon and what your take is on it. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It helps this channel out a ton and it's really important for getting these videos out there. I want to talk observational stuff first and kind of understand maybe what's going on because there's some interesting evidence on cinnamon delaying gastric emptying. See, it's talked about a lot from a blood sugar perspective, but it seems like it has this really powerful effect when it comes down to delaying digestion, which is exactly what we're trying to do with things like Ozempic and whatnot, right? Having big effects on GLP-1. This particular study that looked at this was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and it was looking at high amounts of cinnamon mixed with food. They found that it delayed the gastric emptying to the point where they didn't want to eat that much later. Whether this is through different hunger hormones or gut incretins like GLP-1, we're still trying to figure it all out. But to a certain degree, it is making it so that food is taking longer to digest. So I used to talk about adding cinnamon to coffee, which is great for the insulin resistance and like the fasting insulin effect, but we're talking more so about delaying digestion because that's where the fat loss effects seem to come in. Really interesting stuff. So now let's talk a little bit more about the direct fat loss side of it, because this is where we have to get into a little bit more of mechanistic stuff, but it still is really important to know. So remember that study that I started off with when I said losing one and a half pounds in a couple of weeks? Well, that was published in the Journal of Food Biochemistry, and it was a legit study. It was actually part of a 2022 meta-analysis, what's called an umbrella meta-analysis, where they looked at a lot of different studies and a lot of different pieces of the studies. And generally speaking, what they found with particularly one of the studies that was then further validated with other analysis from other studies is that when subjects had about three grams of cinnamon every day, it resulted in about a one and a half pound weight loss in a couple of weeks. I mean, that is legit. But again, I think where people get confused is they think that the cinnamon is acting as a fat burner, whereas the cinnamon is really just doing some interesting stuff with gastric emptying, making it so they're not wanting to eat as much. But there's another component of insulin that's called cinnamaldehyde, which is really what makes cinnamon cinnamon. And they found that in cell studies, like culture studies, this was triggering fat cells to do a pretty unique thing. It was making fat cells have more browning potential. So it was turning what's called white fat, which is the fat that's just kind of on our body. It was turning it into more brown fat, which is more metabolically active fat that dissipates calories as heat. Very common in rodents because rodents have more brown fat, less common in humans. But the interesting thing is that we're seeing essentially a thermogenic effect of cinnamon. So was that the reason that subjects lost weight? I think it has a play there, but most of the benefit of cinnamon is coming from the appetite sort of suppression gastric emptying effect. When you're playing in the world of GLP-1s and how that all works within the body, remember we produce GLP-1, you have to think about how the microbiome works too. Okay, cinnamon also has polyphenols in it that act as a fiber. Okay, so these can have an impact on our microbiome, which can also influence gastric emptying. I recommend no matter what you're doing from a fat loss perspective, taking care of your gut microbiome with fermented foods, fermented dairy, potentially soluble fiber. If you don't eat fiber, at least just double down on the fermented veggies like the sauerkraut, kimchi, even just fermented brine, right? That's all you have to do. You don't even have to eat the veggie, just drink the brine. That's going to make a big difference. Bone broth for gut mucosal layer, collagen for the gut mucosal layer, a good probiotic and not a piece of garbage one, like one that actually gets into your gut. The one that I use is seed. I've linked out to it down below. The only probiotic that is clinically backed that I really actually believe the research on because they publish even the research that doesn't go in their favor. They're legit. They're honest, which is why I like them, but also it works. Like I personally have noticed 
a significant difference in my digestion. I've noticed a difference in my complexion, my energy, my sleep, because all that stuff matters with the microbiome. So that's a 25% off discount link. I definitely recommend if you're looking from a fat loss perspective or possibly even looking at it from just a metabolic perspective in general, it starts with your gut. So try them out, give them a shot. Again, that top link, the top line of the description, that, that link up there, that's for seed for 25% off. So the fat cells in this study actually changed when they literally put cinnamon on them. It was the University of Michigan. The researchers were fascinated with some earlier rodent model studies. They saw that when they would overfeed rodents, but give them cinnamon, it would protect a little bit from obesity. Like they weren't building as much fat even when they overfed them if they gave them cinnamon. They're like, something is going on. So then they took cells, rodent cells and human cells, and they treated them with cinnamon in their Petri dishes. And they saw that the, the fat cell actually changed. It went through this thermic change where it developed more uncoupling proteins and actually became metabolically active and it was able to ultimately increase lipolysis at that rate, right? So you're having more uncoupling proteins. This in turn increases lipid metabolism. So the fats are able to burn better, right? So really fascinating that the mitochondria are changing and the fat cells are potentially changing. And it validates a lot of what they were seeing. But the interesting thing is they did it in rodent and human cells, right? So the evidence they had was in rodents before that rodents didn't get as fat when they gave them uh, cinnamon. But the human cells responded to cinnamon very similarly to the rodent cells. The thing is, is that humans just don't have as much brown fat. So it's not gonna be as impactful on a human as it is on a rodent. But where it gets interesting is when we couple this with the insulin modulating effects. So there was an interesting study published in 2024. It was that large uh, meta-analysis and phytotherapy research, 24 different studies. And one of the main reasons that cinnamon is so powerful for the metabolism in the first place is that it is an insulin mimetic. There's something called MHPC, and this helps act as insulin. So lowers glucose and helps allow glucose to get into the cell. This by itself, when insulin levels are lower and glucose levels are lower, you are no longer blocking the action of fat burning. When insulin is high, it's very hard to burn fat. It's actually somewhat impossible because when glucose levels are high, the enzymes that break down fat are not active. Okay, so insulin needs to come down before that can happen. So since it acts as an insulin mimetic, it's bringing glucose down so that the fat burning enzymes can activate hormone sensitive lipase. So we couple that with the potential thermic effect and the gastric emptying effect, and it's very profound. So how much do you consume? Well, the basic research suggests about one and a half teaspoons is all you need for like the real metabolic benefit, okay? So from the weight loss perspective, one to three teaspoons, really. And that could be fasted in a cup of coffee, in a cup of tea, in a cup of water. I do it with apple cider vinegar and some lemon in the morning. That's been my thing for a long time. And sometimes I'll add cayenne in there too, because there's a nice little uh, TRPV1 receptor effect there that kind of gets me going and feeling good. But if you're looking for the gastric emptying, you need to go up in the dose a little bit. So we're talking more like three to six teaspoons and that one's mixed with food. I would not do that dose every day. I would save that for the days when you're trying to really control your appetite because again, cinnamon can be problematic. It has to be the saline cinnamon. Okay, we do not want the excess coumarin, which is a component of cinnamon that can be problematic for the liver. So saline cinnamon, yes, it's more expensive, but you don't need that much of it. So if you're going to go higher, put it with food. If you're going to just put it in coffee or tea, just one to two teaspoons is all you need. I'll see you tomorrow.